welcome back to the Art Life YouTube channel. I'm Mrs. B and I'm here today so excited to show you all about one point perspective drawing. Sounds really tricky, but it's not. Stay tuned and I'll show you how. Now, a one point perspective is a drawing method used to show how things get smaller as they get further away. Notice how these boxes are getting smaller and smaller as they converge toward this single vanishing point. I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful artwork like this as an introduction to one point perspective work. Notice how using a one point perspective really adds depth to an artwork. Now using depth means that it looks like you can see within the artwork that your eye is drawn into this point right in the middle. And almost as though we can walk along this path through the aquarium, looking at all the beautiful wildlife in the water. We need a few bits and pieces for the lesson today. Firstly, you'll need some paper. You'll definitely need a ruler of some sort, a Sharpie to draw with, as well as a gray lead pencil to draw with. Now you can also use pastels or crayons if you don't have any pastels and you'll need some watercolors, just blue. I've provided a link down in the description below just in case you'd like to follow those to get some materials for yourself. Now this is mostly a drawing task today. I'm gonna to start off with a gray lead pencil and a ruler just to get everything down that we're wanting. The first thing you need to do is sort of estimate where the middle of your page is and do a tiny little dot. Now to create a one point perspective, you need to have two diagonal lines coming from this one point. Notice I've done a diagonal line coming down here and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, coming to the corner of my page here and here. Almost creates a bit of a triangle. Now I'm gonna do the same thing at the top here and I'll show you why in a moment. And that's gonna to go to the other corners of my paper. Now I've created a bit of an X. It is important to have a ruler for this because if you have sort of wobbly lines, it's not going to look as effective. Now the idea of a one point perspective is it's a bit of a trick that artists and designers use to make the viewer look into the artwork and it seem like the artwork has lots of depth. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to create a design. This, is, this triangle here is going to become the ground of our artwork and I'm going to create a design on the ground. I'm going to do sort of black and white checkered, checkered tiles. Now, anytime we do anything on our ground here, we need to consider this point. So I'm going to start at this point and do some other lines coming out from it. If you don't come from this point, the artwork will not make sense. So you need to always make sure you're using this point here as a reference. You can see already it's kind of making it look like the artwork is going in. Now I'm going to do some horizontal lines. There, that's the idea for our ground. We'll just leave it like that for now. Now what I'm going to do, I need to do this freehand. I'm just going to do some arches. This is going to become the ceiling. I want them to be parallel lines as best we can. I'm going to do three. Now for the sides here, I'm going to bring a vertical line from this point down to this line here. I'm going to do that with each of the arches. One, two, and three. This becomes the side. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Wonderful. So maybe you can actually start to see already how this is a bit of an optical illusion, making the viewer think that the artwork just keeps going on and on and on further and further away. What we're going to do now is lock everything in with a Sharpie. So 
very important that you use a permanent marker for this part because we will be using water later. So if you use a texture that is water soluble, it will get really messy and it will combine with the water. So please make sure that you're using something that's permanent. I'm just gonna go over all of my gray lead lines now, as neat as I possibly can. Now, to decorate the ground here, I'm just going to use my Sharpie to colour in every alternate square here, almost like black and white checkered tiles, like a chessboard. We don't need the Sharpie anymore, we can put that away. And hopefully you can start to see here that the path is leading us to this one point perspective. We're now going to decorate the walls here. So if you've ever been to an aquarium, you might have seen a beautiful dome or some sort of glass wall that helps you to see all the magnificent creatures on the other side in the water. So we're gonna have a go now at using some pastels or if you don't have any oil pastels, you could use crayons as well to draw some creatures that you might see in an aquarium. If you prefer, you can choose to draw your animals with a grey lead pencil first before locking them in with pastels. However, I'm just going to go straight ahead and draw from memory. Now, when you're drawing, be as creative and detailed as you like. I'm adding some colour with some coral down the bottom here. But whenever you're drawing, please try not to draw within the path. You're just drawing within the glass sides and the top here. Now, whenever I'm teaching art, I always say to my students, now what can you add to make your artwork even more interesting? So please consider that when you're drawing and you might go in and give some of your little under the sea creatures some extra patterns or details, making sure you're filling the entire space so that it's really interesting to look at. I'm doing some little spots here for my... Books, books, see books. Octopus. But next, what we're going to do is just prepare our paint. As I said, all we need is blue for the water. And when you're using oil pastels or wax crayons, the great thing about them is that they tend to resist watercolour paint. So you can see that the colour is still coming through. I'm painting directly over the top of my little creatures here turning my walls into water. If you don't have any watercolours, I suggest that you could also water down some blue food dye and it will act the same. There. A one point perspective, aquarium. So it's as simple as that. 
I really hope you are able to have a go at something like this and see that one point perspective work isn't as tricky as it seems, just as long as you follow the simple rule of drawing everything to this one single point. Please make sure that you subscribe to the Art Life YouTube channel if you'd like to see more, as I'll be posting two videos per week for you to create some beautiful artworks at home. Thanks for joining me.